fall off track Just nope. being a broke nigga, I don't know about that At And this all. ain't mumble, so I know you niggas hearing the facts And this ain't drill I'm trying to put NYC on the map Yeah, it's that swift life You already know, welcome back to Let's Talk About It Like I told y'all, consistency is the best key And we gonna keep on opening up them doors so you already Let's talk know about it. Let's talk about it. the regular game, Ty, Ratchet, all one. We up in this, and we got a lot of topics to talk about today. So basically, we all seen the All Star game. I know we. I hope we all seen the All Star game. So today, but if you didn't see it, man. It's no big deal. Let's listen. Let's listen. Facts. <laughs> so the first thing we gonna open up with is the J Cole performance and how we felt it was. Um. So who wants to open up how they think the J. Cole performance was? Yeah, that shit was fire, man. <laughs> different song, different setting. Hey, NFL, take notes, man. Y'all had Travis up there for like five minutes. Everybody told Travis not to do it. Shout out Travis, though. You got to take the clout, man. That's that Kardashian shit. You got to go out there and get it. But J. Cole, man, I like what the NBA is doing, man. I like what Serena is doing. I like what Kobe is doing, man. It was a great performance, great halftime show. Even a great show in the beginning from me. But J. Cole had the halftime show, so he had a lot more time. He had a lot more things to work mm-hmm. with. Mm-hmm. Performance to me, man. I like J. Cole, too. I'm of the year, so. Man, J. Cole performance, all-star, was good, man. I was on my TV, in front of my TV, jamming, bro. Like, mm. I liked how he had the settings, just like you said. Like, one setting here, mm. you know, be hype. Next setting here, be calm, sitting on his chair, rapping. And that's actually, what I actually liked about that, too, that's actually how he performs when he's that's on a fact. tour that's or a what, fact. wherever. That's yeah. a fact, yeah. stages and stuff they actually don't perform the same way i could give you a like it's only a few like dudes like buster rhymes and them dudes that always have the same performance energy but mm. like cole he really did it man it was a good it was good watching that so that's all i gotta say on that definitely so how i feel about the j cole performance first of all i want to say shout out to the nba for like they're really doing things right over there one thing I admire about Adam Silver in the, in the NBA, they're very player-centric, and they make sure they're in tune with the basketball community and what a majority of the players are. So they're, like, they're conscious of that, and that's something that I love about the NBA, and that's why the NBA potentially in America is going to become a bigger sport than the NFL because, honestly, the NFL is just, at this point, disrespecting and, and fucking over like basically the best players and the fan favorites. So shout-out to the NBA for giving us a great performance. Yeah, you, and you, honestly, I've seen some word. That NFL players were asking commissioner of, from the NBA to come over and be the commissioner of the NFL. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think R1 was the one that told me about that. Yeah, no, yeah. And, 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 and that's a real thing. Like, yeah. they despise. Like, the, at this point, right, the NFL, it is what it is, right? And it's sadly, football is going to slowly shift to being more player centric but right now it's just the coaches and the owners that run it so we're going to talk about a segment later where we basically talk about ownership and we're going to talk about the Colin Kaepernick situation but it's just the the NFL is like they're looking real bad compared to the NBA one thing I will say the NBA the NBA is becoming more exciting with these super teams they are better for the sport I do feel like and they also are just better as far as just the community and getting with the NBA players and having them have a, a bigger say so shout out to J. Cole those performance was lovely I love the scenery Everything about it. I love that fact that he was there performing. And just, yo, shout out J. Cole. Um, Definitely candidate for album of the year, you know. And that's all I got to say about that. So anybody else want to add something, comment on something? As far as the NBA. Cole, we need another fire album. That's all I got to say. Fire. Cole, 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 but when Cole go on those droughts for like six to ten months, you know Cole got something cooking up. Cole only drops albums once a year. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I I think he need to come off that and give us a mixtape or something, man. I can't wait. I would love that. This is his last one though, too, though. This one's gonna be his last one, so. His last album? Yeah, he said that's on the last one, that 1985 shit. What you mean? So he retired? I mean, you know how these rappers be. I don't believe it. He probably, like he'll probably take some time off, do you know, because he be doing a lot of stuff for the community. Probably focus more so on that, and then he probably come back and drop something else. I he'll, really love what Cole did though, buying his childhood home and ran into single mothers. I yeah. mean, not even renting it, giving it to them for yeah. free, like letting them live there until they get on their feet. That's fire. That's a fact. And I don't know if y'all uh, 
fucking uh, Troy Ab does something similar to that too. So definitely shout out to Troy Ab yeah, and Troy J Cole Ab. Yeah, and all the rappers. Does something similar to that too. Yeah, just not on. He don't have the money J Cole had, but he tries his best. Well, shout out to Rallo. Rallo actually fucking rent rent. Bought a whole projects and had every his whole hood there living there free until the feds did that shit to him. Shout out to Rollo too. Definitely. So uh, free that man. NFL. I love y'all to death. I'm an NFL. I'm, I'm I love the NFL, but please take notes. Take notes of what the NBA is doing because they are doing it right at the NBA. That's one thing I will say. So uh, we're gonna move on to the next topic. So this topic is uh, dear to all of us. Definitely. Uh, I had to basically get enlightened and get told how important it is for artists of color to win these Grammys. And it didn't really hit me to basically y'all both told me. And I was like, y'all have a great point. We got to definitely talk about future. And it, of course, I love Young Thug and them getting these Grammys. Um, so basically, like, who wants to open up this topic and talk about the importance I, I, of it? I open it up. I, I'm really happy that, you know, Future and, and Thug got, got, got their Grammys. I really am because mm-hmm. just like you, you hit on, not a lot of color people really get Grammys. And when you do get a Grammy, that means, even though, honestly, me personally, I don't care what them white people over there think. Yeah, facts. Right. Future and, 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 and Doug's is goats in my eyes. Crazy, but, yeah. You know, when you get that Grammy, it's... It's, it it's solidifies you. It's just like a, a added salt, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I feel like I feel like Future definitely deserved a Grammy. Mm-hmm. Like, Future been... One of the hardest working. Fire for years. One thing I can say, he's one of the hardest working artists. That's a fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he been consistently fire mm-hmm. for years. I'm talking about since I was uh, uh, not a little nigga, because Future came out probably when I was in my teens. But mm-hmm. he's still been fire consistently. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Doug definitely deserves because Doug got some fire projects, and we all looked at Doug, Doug to fail, especially when we found out Doug was on some you know little fruity shit. Yeah. We all looked at Doug to fail. So to see Doug. Excel as an artist to see future excel as an artist and to watch these guys get their Grammys It was a good thing for me to watch and I was happy that they got their Grammys. Honestly, that's just my take on that All right, so um, I'll, I'll go next so basically um, Future I don't listen to future often But one thing I do know is the influence that he has so I have a just a great story uh, basically, one of my friends that I graduated uh, basic with, we went out to Arizona, right? And I was only in New York knowing how impactful Future was, right? So I literally went to the place. I went to this Arizona. It's like an Arizona state party. And then, like, I didn't know what to play. So they just was like, yo, just play Future. Just just play Future and just have it on shuffle. So that's like, I know that's like, just that you could put a person's, like, album or mixtape on shuffle and not care what it is. And they were jamming to this. And this is like... White kids, Asian kids, everything. So just the impact that Future has Bro, that I've seen in another state, it's crazy. Yeah, I know it's crazy, and I didn't realize yeah, it. Really yeah. is crazy. You could, cause he has, and it's crazy. Like you said, his work ethic. He works yeah. so hard. Yep. I've I've been hearing like this dude be in the studio every every day. Like yeah. when he's on tour, he's in the studio. That's a fact. Like it's just crazy, and it just shows you that he's not just putting out. Uh, trash. Uh, yeah, he's not putting out trash. trash. He's he's pulling. He's putting out good stuff yeah. for all the amount of music he makes. That you could just go on YouTube and just be like, yeah. shuffle on the future. On that's the future a fact. <laughs> and so, like that, that's unbelievable. Yeah. You can't do that with a lot of artists. Yeah, and you can And then when I went to Arizona, I realized how big Future was, and I I gave him respect. But I think you could respect the artist, but not necessarily listen to him, but like listen to all yeah, his projects. That's, that's true. So that's how I feel about Future. And then like Young Thug. I really love, like, I, one thing, I'm a big Young Thug fan, and the reason why I became such a big Young Thug fan, like you said, initially, I wasn't big on Young Thug, until I realized the influence he had on some of my favorite artists. As far as all these up-and-coming new artists, Young Thug is, like, a direct influencer of them being so successful and basically kind of st- putting the blueprint. Melly, I think, is a, a good, like, basically a person that has kind of Young Thug style, NBA Young Boy is a person that kind of stole Young Style and you know refined it and turned to his own, which is one of my favorite artists. And uh, like a uh, a uh, a bunch more. Gunner is another good one. I think yeah. Little Baby yeah, has yeah, hits yeah, of Thug in there. So it's just Young Thug's impact on the modern game. Like he's really a legend. Like he's really a legend. And I just it's good that he's getting his proper respect because from a lot of the older heads, they don't respect it. But seeing his Grammy, they may say, hmm, I. Right. Young Thug is I. Right. Let me let me give Young Thug a gym. Let me give my proper doing and proper respects. 
regardless whether it was from the Childish Gambino he got it, whether it was from his his work as a whole, it was well deserved by uh, Young Thug. I'm gonna keep saying this. People need to separate the personalities from the music. That's a fact. People, That's a people fact. judge Thug because of his personality. They Hashtag didn't really that. listen to the music. Hashtag and I was the that. same way mm-hmm. until I got mature and realized I can't judge people like that. That's a well, fact. That, that, when I listened to that Thug album, what is it? With the, the one with the dress? I was like, oh yeah, this nigga fire. Yo, bro, the bottom. Like, oh my fire. God. The bottom <laughs> six was legend. Yo, I'm like, I, I, I can't. I can't deny not listening to him that's no more. Fact. He's too fire. That's a fact. That's a that's a most definite fact. So um R one, you wanna kinda go into how you feel about this? Um pretty much gonna echo what you guys said. I'm pretty happy that Future and Thug got a Grammy. Yeah. You know, it's pretty big for hip hop and for their careers also. Yeah. Kinda shows the impact that they've been having on the game for pretty much the last decade. Yeah. Um both very heavily influenced and it kinda shows Young Thug's Young Thug's versatility, just being on a Childish Gambino track, mm-hmm. and then he's also been on um a Camilla song from uh, Fifth yeah. Harmony, and he just yeah, does so much right in overall. So yeah. I think it definitely shows his diversity. Also working with Usher and writing songs for Usher, it just really shows that Thug is really on a different uh-huh. level. He has to be respected some more. And same oh, with. Can I ask you a question, bro? Yo. So we already know future superstar status. So what you think about Thug now? He's future star status. So, I mean, superstar status? I don't think so, bro. Like, I don't think he gets, like... I think he has to have, like, an album that has to take okay. him to the next level. Kind of like how Future did. When Future yeah, had... As long as we both agree, Future's album, Future yeah. superstar status. Yeah, yeah so facts. I facts. Thug, like, I think people know who Thug is, but I think until he, like, musically, he has his own project. It's like, damn, this is a classic, or I could put this with somebody else, like, top-tier music. I don't think he's there yet. I agree with you. If you would have said that he was a... He had superstar status, I would have disagreed with you. But I agree with you, because he's... <laughs> All right, smooth, smooth. So that's basically how we feel about the whole Young Thug and Future getting a Grammy. That's just the impact, and then I didn't realize the importance of it, so I'm glad that you guys enlightened me, and it basically gave me a brand new light of that. So basically, shout out to Future and shout out to Young I, I Fucking wanna Thug. Tell, I want to tell a lot of people, though, man, a lot of people that disrespect Future, your favorite artist can't sell out a whole arena. Facts. Your favorite artists respect Future too, cause all their three stacks does so. A lot of the like, I love lyrical rappers. I'm gonna be honest, that lyrical stuff ain't selling, and they can't sell out a <laughs> ring. That shit not selling. All right, so. so most definitely shout out to them too. So now we're gonna move on to All Star Weekend. We're gonna, uh, you guys wanna basically talk about each separate. We're gonna just talk about how we think it was at whole and talk about highlights personally. Uh-huh. Let's do it from category wise. It's not gonna take too long. All right, smooth. So the three point contest, I actually caught the highlights. I didn't see it live because of work, but it, it's fine. Uh, I basically, I ain't gonna front. I thought Seth was gonna win. Like, honestly, uh, yeah, I thought one of them. Well, I thought he would win. Average. They were doing, they were trash talking, they were doing their thing, they were like, oh, you gotta buy tickets for the family, so I thought Seth would be motivated, it would've been nice to see his brother, like, win, right, I, I think that would've been dope, <laughs> but Joe Harris <laughs> was not having any of that, so, Joe Harris ain't for none, nigga. so I'm glad, because as you guys know, since podcast one, I told you guys, I am now a Brooklyn Nets fan, so anything Brooklyn Nets, I'm a firm supporter in, and I love what they're doing, like, I really love the Nets, because... Uh-huh. They play you know, so to, hard. To talk about Joe Harris, I remember when he was on the Facts. cast, man. He was shitty. That's a fact. And to see him, That's to see fact. him playing at this level now is just, it's just, it just shows you how great the NBA is right now. Yo. Because I literally watched Joe Harris get drafted to the Cavs and be nothing. Probably people don't even know this man played for the Cavs. He played for the Cavs. That's people don't even know that. He played for the Cavs when Braun and Kyrie was there. Yep. <laughs> A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. And to, just to see him balling the way he's balling now, not yeah. even just the three-point shooting contest, because of him, his team is winning games. No, most definitely. It, most definitely. So, basically, that's like how we feel about, like, I feel about the three-point contest. The next is the dunk contest. It's really not much to talk about in the dunk contest. Uh, I didn't think the dunk contest was as bad as everybody's making uh, it out to. I think it was pretty bad. I don't know. Just me, personally. I, I thought it was pretty bad. I didn't. I think Diallo, he, his dunks was, like, lit. His dunks was lit. Don't get me wrong. I actually like the Diallo. I Shout think, out to Diallo. He's from Queens. Definitely. I think if Dennis Smith would have, like, been able to connect his dunks. I think it would have been better, but... That's, 
that's the thing. We had good dunkers. Like Miles Bridges had some good dunks, but he couldn't connect them. Yeah. Um, I feel like John Collins had like more in his bag, but I feel like he just. Like, that's the thing with, like, these, like, dunkers that aren't, like, ag experience, like, the superstars. Like, I feel like yeah. they put the dunks in the wrong places. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like if he had better dunks starting off, he would have still been in a competition because he finished I every get, started on the first That is true. Play. I agree with that, too. I agree that, with that, that, too. That Dennis Smith jumping over J. Cole, it was crazy because his hops, boy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. Clear J. Cole, mm-hmm. easy. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> that shit was fire. No, that shit was, that shit was fire. But one thing is, Giannis said he'll do the dunk contest, and Donovan Smith said if he does it, um, he'll go also. So hopefully, we get Giannis to see too next year. long. Like I don't think he could do a dunk. Contest. A lot of it is like hang time, right? So I think it's like the glitter. One thing about yeah, Zach Levine. John Collins. One John thing, Collins' first dunk was nice, but since he was six ten, six eleven, people overlooked. A him. person that's a perfect <laughs> example. When Zach Levine does a dunk, it's really like watching like artwork. Like it's the like it's the most beautiful thing because, I ever like seen. I tell, like I tell you, these these dudes, look, you're calling out dudes that has that has born different athleticism. Like when that man jumps off the floor, it just looks different. Yeah, so you yeah, can't really, really you know compare that. <laughs> like everything, these everything like like look at Zion when he jumps, it looks different. You feel me? So that's it's just fact. like these are natural athletes. Yeah, no, nah, those are like you could tell that's a Donovan guy Mitchell different too. Talent. I think Donovan Mitchell when he jumps it look different too. Like when I watch Zach Levine take off, dude, that's just like an airplane. That's a fact. So hopefully the dunk contest, I we think it we, we, like it could get a little better just with the like you said the more experienced dunkers and the dunkers that are like more naturally athletic. Uh, as far as the skills challenge, it was alright. I'm just happy uh, Tatum won. Even though I'm, like I'm a Trey Young fan, I like the I skill challenge. No, I want the skill challenge. I came in the crib, nigga, and I seen, <laughs> I seen fucking Trey Young went to the bathroom. I see Tatum holding the trophy. I'm like, what I the love fuck? the fact, like, I love that Tatum just said fuck it and just shot it and actually made. Like, I find that Wait, so I hilarious. I don't know what happened. Like, you I have got to you. To me. I walk you through, bro. So basically, what happened? Trey Young was like ahead. Of, he Trey Young was gonna hit the three. He came, he finished, and it was the part where you had to shoot a three pointer. So Jason Tatum was at the half court line. Trey Young is spotting up, but he's like rising oh, in his I jumper. Know, Trey Young about to make exactly, he about to make it. So Jason Tatum, he's just like fuck it. He just shot a half court shot. He hit, he hit Trey Young ball, and then his shit went in, bro. It was like wild, oh, funny. Oh, he hit Trey Young ball. Yeah, going bro. In and his went in. Yeah. Oh, that's fire. That shit was lit, bro. So I like that. I thought that was like that was pretty exciting. So shout out uh, to the skills yeah, challenge. That's fire. I didn't, I gotta watch that. You gotta watch it. Like, I didn't see that part. You, you gonna love it, bro. And then, um, far as the um, All Star Game, I, I liked it. I like, I love the fact, I love the new format. And this is a perfect example of why the NBA is going in the right direction. They let the players draft each other, so it makes it more competitive. And they televised it this year. They exactly. So you see who's really more important, who's really the best player, who's this and who that. Yo, the NBA, I will say, yo, the NBA is doing, yo, Adam Silver, NBA, NBA is all about marketing. You need they're to now. They are doing everything right. NFL, it's okay to take still, take notes. It's okay. Come on. Um, so far as the All Star yeah. game, it went it went good. I, I liked it. I think it was dope. I liked the comeback by LeBron's team because they were getting smacked. Like in the beginning, I know they don't play defense. I know it's kind of just you know a little tic tac offense. Yeah. But they were getting smacked though. I was. Yo, like, well, I don't y'all, y'all was selling. Yeah, I don't know what smacked. y'all was for the second half. Then, then Westbrook just started jacking. I think he went like one for nine and one for eight. He just kept shooting threes and shit. Nah, Fuck. Lillard, man. He looked it. Woo. Yeah. Lillard was pulling balls. Shout out to, to, shout out to Bill, up. too. Shout out to Bill Bill. Uh, Lillard. They did the thing. It's crazy. The all-star, the bench played better than the starters, besides KD, of course. But the you bench You want to know why, though? That's the, because they playing little minutes, though. So yeah, yeah. They sense. had a little energy. They was rejuvenated. And I, and I, and I loved how Dirk balled, man. Dirk went out like a legend for real. Fact. He <laughs> went and hit every three he took. That's legend shit. That's, That's goat fact. shit. And it, even though it might be something that people might not overanalyze, man, Curry was supposed to get the MVP. His hometown, he wore the little jacket he, he wore when he was younger. He started bricking, bro. Yeah, yeah, he was you can't trying. brick. This is you can't brick. You Curry, this your hometown. But his team lost. He would have never got it anyway. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying if you would have like been hitting and doing this thing. Yeah, I'm sorry, Giannis wasn't with that shit. Giannis was playing for that boy. I that's know, what... and that's that's why Curry was supposed to steal that. That's just his hometown. Listen, Giannis but... was telling Curry, "I'm the best." <laughs> he did get the second most votes, but 
Yeah, so that's that's basically how I feel about the All Star game. Shout out to the NBA. I, I more so love what the NBA is doing than the actual All Star game. This All Star week, if the dunk contest would have been good, this All Star week would have been like A plus plus. But because the dunk contest was mediocre to me, if I had to give it a grade, I'd give it like a a B, a B plus in that range. Uh, I, I I love dunk, so hopefully next year it'll be a little better. Well, my take on the All Star weekend, I mean. I don't know, man. I'm I'm a dude, you know, that I don't really, I didn't really like the All-Star weekend this weekend. Yeah. Like, the the, the three-point contest was good. Like, yeah. it was good. Facts. I, I like seeing, you know, Joe Harris with the win. Uh, I thought the Curry boys was going to win or going between, just like Facts. I said. I thought it was going to be one of the Currys. Facts. But... <laughs> With Joe Harris taking it, that was pretty good. Like we we didn't think he would would win it. Uh, the dunk contest did not like the dunk contest. Like it was cool when it first started, but then after a while it just started slowing. After the Dennis Smith dunk, I think everything went down after that. <laughs> I didn't see better. I seen better dunks in the All Star game than I've seen in the fucking dunk contest. I'm gonna be honest. That Giannis dunk was better than every fucking dunk, but the Dennis. But, but the uh, dunk over Shaq, I think. Facts. Yeah, it was the dunk over Shaq. Paul George 360 was that better than a lot of dunks that I saw. Slept I over. even saw some lobs that looked better than some running dunks from half court. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. So, that's just my take on that. The All-Star game was a good game. I, I, I felt I, All-Star game went exactly how I thought it would go. I thought Team Giannis would come out on fire. And mm. then... I just, I, I, this is what I thought, though. I didn't, you know, tell it to nobody. I just felt like that LeBron team was too loaded to lose. So, yeah, even I when agree. it was down 20, I didn't even see it. Nothing. KD came in. KD was like, I, I ain't trying to lose to these niggas. Fuck yeah. that. You, you know what was funny, though? What what gave me a good laugh? What? Clay fouling Curry on that four-point play. <laughs> That's how it feel, motherfucker. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's my take on the All Star Weekend. If I was like you and I give it a grade, just because I've been watching the NBA much longer and I know what they're capable of mm-hmm. on All Star Weekends, but I honestly feel like it probably sucked more because Charlotte's. I'm, I'm not gonna disrespect the city, but I've been to Charlotte. It's not that yeah. great of a city. Right. But I'm gonna probably give it a C. Okay. <sighs> so, all one, how you feel? Um. I think this All-Star Week wasn't too bad. It definitely has been better ones because of, like, the dunk contest. Like, All-Star Weeks kind of work on how every event is going. Yeah. I think the the World vs. USA game was a good game. The All-Star game was a good game. The dunk contest was kind of mediocre, but I don't think it was as bad as people trying to make it out to be. Like, we yeah. haven't seen that many good dunk contests in a lot of years, recent years. So yeah, that's very true. Though. It's, it's kind of hard to just add up to a good dunk contest. But, you know, but, you know, when they watch, dude, the dunk contest, like the Zach Levines, like, Zach you know, Levine. they think about that. I'm that's sorry. I'm saying, that's just stuck in my head. Years, you get that consecutively, it's like not a lot. Like, people, yeah. people fail to remember that. Like, we're not going to get a lot of good dunk contests regardless. That's a fact. But I think, from this year, like, just saying, like, the popularity and how much, like, this week was publicized, I think, like, more stars and more athletes, well, more stars will be, like, willing to do more of these competitions to get noticed as more. But I'll, yeah, that's true. Uh, I'll get this week a B. I don't think it was that bad. But okay. I think players kind of realize it's just a lot of the gag session to, to get Man, to the... I don't, to like, players. I... You, like, I usually, you know, like, with All-Star Weekend, though, I usually be fiending. Like, I'll watch their practice. Mm-hmm. I'll watch all that shit. And I was just, I just didn't do that shit this year. Yeah, it's not. So, that's why I gave it a C. Recent years, players are just realizing it's really a break just to get to yeah. the playoffs, really. Like, yeah. they don't take it as serious as the other players used to do back in the day. Which they shouldn't, though, because, like you said, it's a vacation. And they yeah. got to make it back to their teams healthy. Mm-hmm. So, you don't want to put yourself under, yeah. under uh, you know. Too much pressure. Fact. So that's uh, anybody got any side comments? That's basically all how we feel about the All Star Weekend. Shout, Shout out, out to Chicago. everybody that made All Star. They get Shout out to D-Lo. Everybody on both teams d- deserved it. Shout out to everybody that made All Star. Shout out to the people that was injured, like Victor Oladipo, that couldn't make it. Most he de- he definitely was an All Star this year. You know, just. 
Shout out to the NBA, like you said, man. NBA is on 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 the top pedal stool right now. Yo, NBA, we need better All Star game jerseys, man. Y'all been lacking, man. Facts. Or should I say Nike? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So the next topic I can't wait to talk about. Um, this is a topic that it's been funny, um, but definitely the Big Ben and like Antonio Brown and the Steelers whole situation. The Steelers right now are just like a joke. So I feel bad for you if you're a Steelers fan. Just everything that's going on there and that they allowed to go on there for this long without producing like championships anymore is just like disgraceful. So um, anybody who wants to open up this topic and kind of touch on it from all aspects of... You should open it up. I think you should open up all but, football topics. But I got you. <laughs> I got you. Look, this is hilarious. So I'm going to break down like kind of how the Steelers situation been, right? So it's no question that we all know that Mike Tomlin is a player's coach, right? And it's not a lot of players' coaches in the NFL. So we have pros and we have cons to being a player's coach. So Mike Tomlin being the way he is, he has players run his quote-unquote locker room. But what's happened is that Big Ben has been a toxic to this locker room ever since he got their rookie year. The The bad thing about Big Ben, regardless of him being a Hall of Famer, is that he doesn't take accountability for his actions, right? I so agree. the he, first he thing like he career. does is blame people, and he doesn't do it in a tactful way. And then another thing that he does that people touch on, he doesn't do it privately. So he wouldn't tell you nothing face-to-face, -face, but he will go on a camera or go on social media, or go on his little radio that he goes on and talks bullshit about his teammates. And then, next thing you know, you're hearing it from basically a third source. Like, if you felt I didn't do that route right, if you felt I dropped the ball, why don't you come to me and address right. me as a, as a man? Why are you going through other sources? Why are you basically, in a sense, gossiping not or talking behind my man, back? Though, not even as a man, as a teammate. Yeah. Like, help it. That's going to help y'all win That's the a game, fact. Though. No, that, that, that's definitely a fact. And then, it's coming to a point now where Big Ben... He has become he's he basically became that spoiled kid that you didn't discipline when they were younger and now he's fostering to be like a toxic. And at this point, the Big Ben, I don't care how good he is, he he's not good enough now to do what he's doing and still be on that team because he's not producing the same numbers he's doing before. He had a performance where he threw like he had like six turnovers. Like Big Ben is not the old Big Ben. So the far, as far as him disrespecting somebody like Antonio Brown that will be a legend in the NFL, and although he may not have the hardware, he came when that team was kind of off the pedestal. So I don't think he should be, like be regarded or disrespected for the hardware because Antonio Brown is not. He only work. He works. He's one of the hardest working wide receivers I have seen since, of course, Odell Beckham. As far as work ethic, what he does, his swimming training, his sand training, like everything that he does, like he is like a workhorse. And I think his personality is predicated off of Big Ben's negativity. I honestly think, I changed my mind about Antonio. I honestly think if you switch Antonio Brown to a more positive organization, I don't think we will get what like what he has claimed to be or this like big Antonio Brown situation. He was just a straight addressing situations on Twitter. And he basically uh, said, Big I don't Ben's think the a problem. lot of the stuff that's going on in the Steelers organization is his fault, but a yeah. lot of that stuff he did bring on himself. No, like, mm -hmm. like some of the stuff that he said on Twitter with the, uh, with the, with his old teammate. What he said, he said that he's a, uh, what he said about uh, the dude. Oh, that works at you talking about Ryan? You talking about Ryan Clark? Ryan Clark yeah, the safety. Yeah, he said that he. What he said he was? He, he said basically he said that he was a me me guy. I can't remember what he said, but I, I remember. No, I know what Ryan Clark said about said about him, but. It's something, but you know. I, I know, I know what you're talking about. So I'm talking about what did he say about Ryan Clark? I, he he basically, I think in a sense, I, I think, think he, he might have called call him a coon. Like a slave I think he called him a coon. Something. I think he called him a coon. So he basically was saying that he's conforming to them on ESPN. So he basically was calling him like a right. form of a coon. But, hey, but hey, you gotta understand, this man's doing a job. No, no, and he was honest. And the thing is, you can't call him that because he's talking from experience and an altercation he had with you. And the thing is, right? Sadly. This might sound crazy, right? The wide receiver position is a position that you are considered a diva, and that, that's just what it yeah, is. That's, that's the stereotype. Now, one of the positions that you can't be considered, in a sense, a diva or, like, a, a personality or attitude, or at least it doesn't lead to success, is the quarterback position. So Big Ben doing this is kind of out of character of being a quarterback. As a quarterback, sadly, you're the leader of a team. You are the heart and soul of a team, and usually the more quiet, more conform. More listen, disciplined quarterbacks just win the hardware. That's just how it listen, is. I'm not letting Big Ben off the hook, but it's some things with AB I 
gotta get at him. Nah, nah. That... Like another, like another thing too that I have a problem with because this just ain't cool in my eyes, especially yeah. if you're a person that played football. Uh, the coming to the games with the fur on the sideline and leaving yeah. before the game is over. Come on, come on. We teammates. We all in for the same thing, bro. What is, that's what that's is that's you doing? Whatever you got, whatever problems you got with with. With the people above, that's yeah. that's your issue. But support us because we support you. Yeah, that that's a fact. And this the the Steelers organization, just far as last year with the taking a knee, not taking a knee, half team doing this, half team doing that. Far as the Le'Veon Bell supporting them on different pages, them throwing like that guy. This is my example of that. It starts from, of course, the ownership. Then after that, it goes down to the coach, which allowed this to fester because if he would have nipped this in the butt in the beginning, this never would be allowed. And I don't think as a quarterback, you should be going to talk to radio personalities at some bum radio show out here talking your team's business, which he does. He does on yeah, his radio show all the time. He he literally, like, when I mean he answers any question, he answers any question. Like, yeah, it's, and it's just I crazy. I think it's his radio show, too, because I think he goes on it at every Monday. Yep, uh, yep. I know, I know what you're talking yep. about. And, and it is annoying. It really is annoying. And I used to be, Big Ben used to be one of my favorite players. But he, everything you're saying about him right now is 100% true. Yeah. I'm not even going to lie. So, like, far as, like, the whole situation, A.B., I hope he gets shipped out. Big Ben, he, I know this won't change because Mike Thomas just allows it. And it's to the point, like, he's became that spoiled kid that when they want candy, they, they get candy. So, uh, hopefully that situation is better. Hopefully Big Ben learns how to be a better leader. And he's a Super Bowl champion, but he needs to understand Damn that. Man, bro. You can't, you yeah. can't teach, no, you can't teach, teach old dogs, dogs new tricks, tricks. Yep. man. And that's my point. He became that spoiled kid. But all, he's just going to slowly destroy they, the Steelers they, nation until he's retired. They ain't, the, they ain't the discipline when he, when he got them rape charges. Yep. That, that's the Steelers' problem. That's a fact. They, they 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 treated him like he was a a big part of them winning that ring his rookie year. Oh, when he, he wasn't. wasn't. That he defense wasn't. was everything. Yep. Fact. So I really don't understand that. But yep. It is what it is, man. These oh, that's why I be saying the NFL. They gotta step. They shit up, man. Because that that's not cool, dude. Yeah. Like this dude had a whole rape charge, and I didn't even back. I didn't even remember back in oh nine in them years. Even talking about it like that, did yeah. he even get suspended for it? Uh, yeah. When the investigation, the initial investigation was happening, I believe he got suspended for a little bit. But he came back, I think after three games. I think he got like two, three. Yeah, games? he got three games. I think it was like three. Man, or that's four. bullshit, man. Yeah. If he was black, he would have probably got ten. Yep, and that's the thing. So, just basically, since Rich, you already like kind of anything else you want to add to your point of like Big Ben, the AB situation? I mean, Big Ben, like I said, Big Ben is he was one of my he's one of my favorite QBs growing up, but. Yeah. Every single you, I can't even say nothing because you hit it spot on. You had said every issue that I have with him. Yeah, and he, I feel like AB's right. He definitely does have a owner mentality. <laughs> he, he, does. he does. He does though. He really does. But I think he needs to fucking retire, man. Facts. I mean, that team sucks Facts. on offense because he sucked. Retire, man. Get, just, just He's leave. not that good. He's not good. Just retire, man. I'm on the same page with you with that. Just just leave, man. And you could talk about everybody you want as a retired player. Yeah, go in the booth and do a Tony Romo do a Tony Romo job mm-hmm. or something, man. It's a fact. Like all these problems and then, and honestly, my issue he should have never even played this year. Because if you if you thinking about, oh, should I retire? Nigga, you ain't thinking about doing yep. thinking about winning anyway. Yeah. So I, if I was if I was the uh, coach of the Steelers, I probably would have even even though you know you kind of got to because he's still your best QB. Yeah, but I fact. probably would have looked in a different direction, thinking yeah. like, man, this nigga don't want to be here. Mm-hmm. He was he, thinking about retiring a month ago. One foot in, one foot out. Mm-hmm. I agree. That's my that's that's just my takes on Big Ben. I don't got nothing to really say on that. I just want AB to come to the Jets. Mm-hmm. You feel me? We take care of you, buddy. You don't gotta worry about none of that shit. You know my guys take care. They they uh they players in the locker room. That is a mm-hmm. fact. All right, so all one. Uh, basically, let us get in your head. I know we hit a lot of the topics and a lot of the concerns, but kind of let us pick your head and see how you feel about this whole situation. Um, I think they're both being divas, more so Big Ben. 
because he is calling people out publicly, and not everybody reacts well to that. Not everybody can take public criticism or even constructive criticism. So I think he has to be a better leader in, in that aspect of his game, even though that's probably not going to change because he's at the end of his career. But I think he pretty much messed up the the later years of that franchise with Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown. I think both of them went out because they don't want to play a big Ben. Antonio Brown more so because Le'Veon's not there. He has to do more stuff, and now that big Ben's kind of on his back, it's kind of like more of an effort to be like, okay, why am I really yeah. here? It's kind of just me. Um, shout out to Juju. He's going to see a lot of double teams this year. <laughs> Facts. Hope and you know, able to go where he wants, and hope Le'Veon's able to go where they want, man. And, hey, for for you people that's on Twitter or on my news feed, I don't know about anybody else's news feed. Hey, stop saying Big Ben made A B. Cut that shit out. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, who said that? Whoa, <laughs> bro, a lot of people on my on my Twitter uh, people feed are crazy. said Big Ben made A B. Man, cut that shit out. That man will be great anywhere he goes. As much as yeah. interceptions as, as Big Ben throws, I think it would be a do I somewhere else. Y'all like, come on, come on, man. <laughs> because people try to say, look at Mike Wallace. Dude, AB is a way better talent than Mike Wallace. Cut that shit out. I don't like when They try, try to say try Mike to... Wallace yeah. and Antonio Holmes. They try to say all these receivers ain't the same without Big Ben. Cut all that shit out. And San Antonio Holmes actually had some few good years without Big Ben. Facts on the Jets, I remember. A B gonna be A B wherever he go, y'all. Let me tell them something to the to the to the naysayers. A B B double teams. I seen it. Countless, countless games. A B B double teams. I literally seen A B get double team and catch it over two people consistently week week in or week out. Like A B is a monster. His route running is like damn near top tier. The only person that's close to him in route running in the league is probably Amari Cooper. As far as like Chris routes, cuts. Everything. Like, don't, man, don't I wish my had a fucking wide receiver don't like ever, that, man. The Steelers, so. took, the Steelers took him for granted, man. That's a fact. So They took him and Le'Veon Braun for granted, and they're going to feel it next year. Definitely Facts, they're going to feel it. Shout out Junior, man. Facts. So, the next topic we're going to talk about is the playoff push and who we think in this 25-game stretch will make it, will get kicked out potentially. I like this. I like this. Uh, debate right Definitely. here. Like so how, how do we feel? And of course, we're going to talk about do we think the Lakers are going to make the cut? Of course, guys. But So who wants to open up with this like this push? Who we think hey, before, while all one open up, I want you to go uh, look up all the games the Lakers play. So I let all one open up. <laughs> you look at the games, look at how much games the Lakers got left. And then, I got and you. then you know, we, we'll see if they make playoffs. I got you right now. Oh, uh, the way the playoffs is looking at right now, I'm going to say it real quick. Eastern Conference, Milwaukee 1, Toronto, Indiana, Boston, Philly, Brooklyn, Hornets, and Detroit. Um, I do not. Let me see. I think Brooklyn, I think from 6 and up will make it. Obviously, Charlotte and Detroit to toss up. I think Miami will get in there for ways last season. And I'll say Miami and Detroit will take that 7th and 8th spot. Okay. As far as the West goes, everybody knows Golden State's number one. I think Denver's going to drop from number two. I think when it's all said and I think OKC will be number two. Houston will probably be three. And then the rest will kind of falls in place. Probably Denver will be fourth. And then the Lakers right now are sitting at 10th. I got their games here, so if you want me to shoot off the games, we can kind of walk through them after and just talk about win or loss. So if you want to hold the Lakers... We can hold the Lakers, bro. But if you want to go right now, that's fine. Um, I got the Lakers making the playoffs. Look, LeBron's over there. Everybody's going to come back. LeBron knows it's a little easy week to try to get more people to the Lakers. But mm-hmm. now he knows it's time for the push. I see the Lakers getting in. I see they're three games out behind Sacramento, the Clippers, and the Spurs. I don't see the Clippers making the playoffs. I see Pop somehow, some way getting back into the playoffs. Mm-hmm. So I'll probably have. Ooh, I don't even know. Mm. Utah too. Oh, <laughs> so LeBron probably realistically this year will sit at the bottom three seeds. I'm thinking most likely seven for eight this year for the Lakers. And that's all I got. Okay. Well, let me see. Let me see. So, what teams are not making it? Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's tough, especially in the West, dude. Facts. Yeah. <laughs> Facts. I'm looking at these numbers like, hey. Man, that shit, that shit is tough. Like, I really, man, 
I don't know. I know for sure the Suns ain't making it. I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you looking down there. <laughs> nah, bro, it, I ain't even, I'm trying to, because I don't, you know, got the thing opened up yet. It's it a little slow. I can walk so, you through. I can, I can, yeah, I can, you I can. just walk through the Lakers game right now while I, while, while I look through. I bet. So, the big topic, of course, is if the Lakers are going to make the playoffs at the 10th spot right now. So, basically, we have their schedule up, guys. We're going to go through the games we think they're going to win, we think they're going to lose, and how we think, basically, what they may end the record with. We all know, cool, this West here, West is, but we want to know if Braun going to make the playoffs. That, that, that's what we really want to know. All right. So, the first game they play off coming back from after the All-Star break will be the Rockets. How do we feel? That's an L. That's an L. <laughs> I agree. That's an L. <laughs> all right, so we all agree L L. I'm gonna document this so we Wait, all. Wait, for which one, the Rockets? Rockets. I got an L with that Who's one. Home? Uh, give me one second. We pull it up. Houston at Los Angeles. I'm gonna have to roll with the Lakers on that one. Okay, so we're gonna tally up everybody. So Ty got L. All one got. L. Wait a minute. 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 Everybody should be back on the Rockets by the end of uh. At the, by the end of, by this by the, by that game, right? Everybody on the Rockets should be healthy and back, right? Mm-hmm. So yep. I say don't propeller out. Oh boy! Oh, you want to switch? Rockets. It ain't too late. It ain't too late. <laughs> nah, Rockets, boy. Easy yeah. money. All right, Rockets. Rockets is too deep now. Rockets is yeah, too Rockets, deep now. All right. Yeah, Rockets is really the second best team in the, in the West. Right. So for the next so the next Lakers game, we got the Lakers and we got the Pelicans. I think that the Lakers are gonna win. How do you guys feel yeah, about the Lakers that? Are gonna win. I'm going to win in the next three, man. Lakers, Grizzlies, and Pelicans again. Damn, all one, all in. Hold on, let me put that. Nah, they're going to lose one of them to the Pelicans, I promise you. Yeah, they definitely going to lose one. They're going to lose one because AD playing. You got to remember that. They're going to lose one. He on minute AD, restrictions, though. AD, AD going to sell the game to LeBron, bro. There's no time for this. All right. I don't think AD going to have a minute restriction against LeBron. So, uh, so all I want to say he's all three for the next one. So basically, the Pelicans and the Pelicans. Rich, uh, how you feel? Lakers versus Grizzlies. You got the Lakers with that dub. Yeah, that's easy money. Grizzlies shitty. Uh, <laughs> they like the second worst team in the uh, West. Yes, yeah. Huh? All right, and then how you feel, Rich? So you got them with a a W uh, with that next Pelican game or L? I know for sure they're gonna lose one of them. Oh yeah, one of them. I don't so, know which one it is. It could be the first one or the second. They're so you gotta end because I'm tallying this. Mark in. one as an L for me. Mark one. Okay, so it doesn't matter as long as I'm mark one. Okay, cool. So then the Bucks. How y'all feel? I think the Bucks are gonna win. They're them. gonna lose against the Bucks. I got that too. They have no one to stop Giannis. Like no one. Period. And right. then you're gonna have to doubles. Yeah, I got the Bucks. Yeah, they're getting smacked both times they play the Bucks. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the next game after that is the Suns. I got them with a. I ain't gonna front. I'm gonna give them this L with the Suns. I have a feeling they're gonna lose this. Bullshit. Nah, I got Brown by talking, nigga. <laughs> yeah, I'm giving them the Suns are shitty, bro. I'm Suns sorry. Suns are shitty. Nah, that's a fact. Nah, bro. <laughs> Check out all the easy ones off. Yeah, that's a W with that one. With the Suns. Right, I got an L for that one. Yeah, I got a W. L. Okay, I got L. Okay, so for the next one, we got the Clippers. I got a W. How y'all got? How y'all feel about the Clippers? Against the Clippers? Yeah. I might have to give them an L, man, because yeah. that Clippers team super deep and with scorers off the bench like Lou Williams could be an issue. Mm-hmm. W. <laughs> yo, yo, all the way right now you got them like one, two, three, four, five, six. You got you got six dubs right here, man. Uh, y'all ain't hear a ball Brown said out the game, bro. He said it's time to make this push. Right, Brown, <laughs> they playing two niggas, man. Listen, Bron, Bron is great. We all know that. But it's his players around him going to make that push. I ain't going to lie. I seen Bron carry less, so. I feel you, but all I right. don't know, man. Them young guys is kind of stupid to me. All right, for I, the- could, I could agree with you in playoff time, but in the regular season, yeah, I seen Bron do more with less. So, what's up? We got, the, right. we, we got the Nuggets next. How y'all feel about the Nuggets? Nuggets? Um, oh, they're losing the Nuggets. Isaiah Thomas, everyone is back. They're losing. Yeah, they're probably losing that one. Okay. I got a W with that one. All right. How y'all feel with the Celtics? Um, they, that one. they won the last game, so Celtics going to look for blood. I got an L with that one. And uh, Harry probably will be playing this game, too. So I'm going to have to go with a, another L for the Lakers. Uh, Brown winning that one, bro. Hey, Trills, make 
sure we mark all of these shit so bro, we can come back and look at them, Bro, man. I got all of them. I got all of them right now. That's why I, <laughs> this is going to be lit. <laughs> so how y'all feel about the Lakers and the Bulls? Another W. Yeah, man, I got another that. D- yeah, that's a W. Back to back, the though. They're like the second come, worst team. And they're going to come out the third uh, worst team in the, in the, in the East. And they're going to take this L. The two back to believe. I can't believe my Knicks worse than Cleveland. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Random, yo, and uh, how y'all feel about the Lakers and the Raptors? I got an O. Yeah, I'm gonna get y'all that's, L. that's a calm, calm L. We all got L. Yeah, especially with no big to to contain us all a little so, bit. Calm yeah, L. So. How y'all feel about back the Pistons? Back uh, to back, back. Pistons, so you wait, got Pistons and Knicks. Knicks. Pistons in your Knicks. <laughs> It's Pistons, they, they then your Knicks. Yeah, I got, I got, I got back to back. I got back to back dubs too. And then after we gonna do each other's record, this is go. I'm feeling this. This is gonna be. And they got three straight after the Bucks. Stop playing, man. <laughs> Let me hear, man. Let me hear who they play next after. The I Pistons. bet. So after, so after they play the uh, the Knicks, they got the Bucks. I got another L. I don't know, man. They're not gonna keep losing all these games to the Bucks. They're gonna have to get a dub somewhere. So I'm gonna give them that dub. Ah, uh, you gonna give them that one? All right, I got you. Give them that dub. <laughs> I got them with that L, son. Crack, they losing that one because they're not gonna win two straight and beat the Bucks. Fuck them. <laughs> they consistent. Them niggas is consistent on one. <laughs> okay, all right. So then after the Bucks, right? Three we straight. Got, we got oh, so he got three straight. So all I'm saying three straight. Rich with the Nets. Kings and Wizards. They're gonna lose to the. They're gonna lose to the Nets. They're I think so too. Close game with the Kings, but I think they're gonna bring out the W with the Kings, and they're gonna win. To, they're gonna win against the Wizards. I agree. I think they're gonna have a closer game with the Kings than the Nets, but nah, I think because the Nets, yo, nah, the Nets the D Nets up. Got everybody back, all their scorers and Carlos Levert look like he didn't even have an injury. I'm going with the Nets. Yeah. Uh, Bronx spiking on niggas. So all went got yeah, three the straight. Nets, but, but the Nets got a lot of people with like a whole bra that can like contain That's a fact. And, and, and make others. And work. then don't forget about so, they big. He's definitely a great shot blocker. Uh, they big is good. He's real good Island, defensively. Island, yeah. I think he real. So Rich, you said he's winning two out of the three, right? Yeah, two out of three. Because I got him losing to the Nets, and I got I I got him beating the Kings and the Wizards. Okay, cool. But so, he gonna mm-hmm. he's gonna barely beat the Kings though. I think he's gonna smack the Wizards. But I won't sleep on the Wizards, man, because that team is looking a little deeper than before. I feel like they might knock the Pistons out that eighth spot. Shout my out. opinion. I was, I was looking at. The I was two. looking at the Wizards too. I, I, I actually. I, they offense over there, I had bro. them going two out of the three. And bro, I, I feel you. They offense, boy. But when Bobby Portis is scoring buckets like he's been doing since he got over there, yeah, that's an issue. Most definitely. I feel you, but Detroit and Miami are better now. Charlotte too. Boy, Detroit don't. Detroit lost their best shooter. After Blake Griffin and, and fucking and Drummond, who the fuck else is on that roster? That's all you need, bro. Else. Blake Griffin, Blake Griffin get buckets. They get, get <laughs> Blake Griffin Nigga, do Bill, get buckets. Bill, boy, Bill. All right, Blake Griffin get buckets. Bill is gonna match every point Drummond puts up. So they're gonna offset <laughs> each other, right? What about so the then, rebounds? Who the fuck yeah. else is gonna score? Who the fuck else is gonna score with uh Blake Griffin? Uh, what about the rebound they getting on? The niggas is eating a lot of glass, boy. What's this nah, not not that much though, because Bobby they got some good rebounders, and I think Dwight Howard's coming back too. So Dwight Howard really coming back? Yeah, I think I think so. I'm not too sure though. Don't quote me on that. All right. <laughs> All right. So after the Wizards, they have the next three will be the Jazz, Hornets, and Pelicans. They're going to beat the Jazz. It's going to be tough, but they're going to beat the Jazz. They're going to beat the Hornets, and they're going to beat the Pelicans. So yeah. I got them three straight. Yeah, I got three straight, too. I ain't going to lie. This is, this is, that, that's money right there. I got three straight. Here's your money. All right. I'm about to put three straight for everybody, or everybody believe three straight, right? Yeah, three straight. Okay. Let me just tally this up. Especially that... by then. That should be April by then. I think they should be super locked in Facts. by then. All right, so after that, now this is where it gets spicy. Y'all ready? This is where it gets spicy. I got nothing but L's in the chat. They got the Thunder, Warriors, and Clippers. So how y'all feel about those next three? They got to I don't think they beat OKC this year. I think year, one so out of three. Gotta get a, they got to get a dub from OKC somewhere. 
Yeah. So I'm gonna give them a W with that one. What was the other ones? So they got Thunder, Warriors, and Clippers. They're gonna lose to the Warriors and they're gonna beat the Clippers. Okay. I got them going one out of three. So, um, all one. What you got them on this little? It, it be OKC and the Clippers. Okay. W and Rich, you said you got them uh, two out of three, right? Yeah, because I had them losing to the Warriors. Got gotcha. you. Yep. Got gotcha. you. Okay. So for the next one, the last two games of their season, we have the Trailblazers and Jazz. I think they'll lose to the Jazz, but I think they'll beat the Trailblazers. How about y'all? I think they'll. I think they'll beat. I think they'll beat the Jazz, and I think they'll beat the Trailblazers. But that game is gonna be insane. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. That last game is gonna be they're beating insane. both, man. Run at home for both of them games. They win yeah, both. that's why I say I think they're gonna win both. I think, but I think that game against the Trailblazers, especially with Cantor coming off that bench now, I think that last game is gonna be epic because I know they're probably gonna be playing for seedings and stuff by then, especially Portland too. Because I think Portland is what fifth seed right now. No, they're fourth seed. So <laughs> teams by then should be playing for for seeding. So I feel like you know it'll be that. But you, that's all the games for the the uh, Lakers. Yep, that's all the games. So, so so tell me on your thing, do, do they make playoffs? Because they need at least sixteen games. To I got playoffs. I got exactly sixteen W's on mine on mine. So I'm gonna tally up our ones. Two four. I got more than sixteen. Yeah, oh, two four six eight ten. 12, 14, 16, 18. Yeah, all yeah, one has 19. Need to win at least 16 games. All one has 19 wins. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, And how much 7, I got? 9, they probably go with 18. 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You have 14, Rich. So if you want to make some changes. So I got them not making playoffs? Basically. <laughs> 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 right, I got sixteen. Is, and I'm gonna I'm keep rocking, and I'm gonna rock with that too. So, I'm not gonna change my yeah. answer, man. So if, if my if my things say they're not make, making playoffs, they're not making playoffs. That's so right. maybe Minnesota get in that in that eighth spot. Maybe yeah, Dallas will get me, in there. Tell me your last three on, on the on the Western Conference, man. My last three that's not making it. No, you have like like eighth, like last six, seven, oh. eight, nine. Six, seven, like. Who I think is gonna be in those spots? Yeah. Okay, so look, right now I'm just gonna go over the seeding right now, to, so I get a better understanding yeah. of who I think is gonna be in. So number one is Golden State, number two is Denver, number three is OKC. I feel like them three teams is gonna stay that way. Four, Portland, five, Houston, six, Utah, seven, San Antonio, eight. Mm. I think I think uh, Houston will make it up to four. Yeah, okay. I, think, I think Denver will drop and Houston will get up there. I don't think Denver will stay that high. I think Denver will end up top four. I think Denver will stay that high because they have everybody back now. Yeah. Literally everybody. That's true. So I think they're going to stay up there. Uh, Okay, now six, seven, and eight. I feel like Utah is definitely staying at six. Uh, San Antonio. Bro, this is very hard, bro. Because I don't know who I'm giving this eighth spot to. It could go. Between... I think San Antonio. I ain't gonna cap, bro. Nah, so I, ain't gonna I had Pop San Antonio at seven. <laughs> Pop not yeah, Pop. I'm not giving. Pop's not missing playoffs, bro. So I, I'm keeping San Antonio at seven. Mm. Eighth is tough. I don't think the Clippers is making playoffs, right? I don't think they're making playoffs. I'm Jack and Kings. You heard on your list. But, but bro, Kings is hungry. Yo, Kings is hungry. I'm sorry. Can't see who? Kings is hungry. Kings is hungry. I'm jacking it. You know what's crazy? Warriors, bro. I can't. My head, my head can't picture that, bro. Sorry. Bro, I can't picture that neither. But Sacramento is real close. Yo, bro, Sacramento is hungry. It's crazy because Dallas can make it. Minnesota can make it. LA can make it. Sacramento, even the Pelicans can make it. You know, it's just Yeah, it's all a game. Yeah. It's real, it's real tough, you know, but the A spot, I don't, bro, I really don't know. But I'm not going to pick the, put the Lakers there because my thing says the Lakers not making it. So I'm going to have to put the Sacramento Kings at the A spot. I now. love it. I love that. Good shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got your last three for um, the East, too? My last three for the East? Uh, this is easy. I think. That shit going to. All right, look, Brooklyn is definitely. I think Brooklyn out of the Yeah, the Brooklyn's state. making it. Yeah. They're staying six because I don't see them catching the Philly, Boston, and them. Yeah, so they're definitely facts. staying six. I agree. Uh, 
Charlotte, I don't think Charlotte's making a playoffs. That's mm-hmm. just me personally. I so I think Miami will get in, like you said. Yeah, Miami will get in. And I don't think I don't think Detroit is gonna make it, bro. I really don't. I was looking at Washington, but I don't know. I don't watch Washington that much. Washington too far. Doesn't even say Washington to Detroit. But ever since the trades, they've been looking okay. They've been looking okay. They've been scoring better too. But I just I just don't know, you know. Cause they do have better scorers too than Detroit. Like Detroit really just play Griffin and Drummond over there. That's what I'm saying. And if one of them get hurt, it's a wrap. Yeah, it's so true. I might have to go with. I might have to take out Detroit and put Washington, bro. I can see that. Cause Blake Griffin and, and Drummond got to be too consistent to like win over there. Yeah, I'm. I'm. A, I'm. A, I, I, that's mine's right there. Milwaukee, Toronto, Indiana, Boston, Philly, Brooklyn. Uh, who I had at seventh? I had uh-huh. Miami, and I had Washington. Yeah, I can see that too. Uh, Charles, you got yours? Yeah, I got mine. So how I think how the East is going to uh, basically fan out, I think the Bucks will stay one. Raptors will stay uh, two. I think the Pacers are going to drop to about, I want to say about the fifth. I think the Celtics will move up to third. Uh, 76 is going to mm-hmm. They can drop to fifth. Okay. Yeah, because, yeah, okay. I, I think they're going to drop. They're going to still, but I think they're going to drop. I think Celtics and 76 are going to catch fire. And they're basically yeah, going to trade off back and forth right. between, like, that third, that fourth, that third, that fourth kind of vibe. Um, yeah, I have the Pacers at five. I, the Nets are going to stay at six. Um, the Hornets, I feel like the Hornets are going to s- slowly start to drop down. Uh, yeah. I do feel that the Heat, I definitely know for a fact that the Heat is going to make either the seventh or eighth. And then next. Um, and people, my fault for cutting you off, Trills, mm-hmm. and another thing, too, people got to realize the Heat hasn't been healthy all year. So when everybody comes yeah. back for that team, it's a wrap. Yeah, and I'm not going to lie. I'm going to have the Pistons making it. I have the P- Pistons as eighth. Pistons as eighth. All right, that's cool. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Uh, wrong. What about the West? All right, so for for the West, I have the I have the Warriors. I do think the – uh I actually think the Thunder is going to get the second seed. Um, Warriors are going to keep the first. Thunder will move up to second. Uh, the Trailblazers are going to drop one, so they're going to be at five. I'm going to bump the Rockets up to four. Yeah, I had that too. Yep. I'm going to bump the Rockets up to four. Trailblazers at five. Uh, I, I keep the Jazz at six. And then the Spurs is going to make it. So Spurs is going to make it without a doubt. And then I think the Kings are going to bump out. Uh, matter of fact, the Kings are gonna Lakers are going to bump out the Kings. And then the Lakers are going to move up with a late playoff push, which I had them winning like three straight in the end. So the Lakers are eighth. Spurs seventh. Lakers eighth. And then Kings are just missed the playoffs by like okay. two games. Okay, that sounds good. But... The Lakers better not want to. I don't think the Lakers want to get nothing with no tie with Sacramento because I think they own the tiebreaker. Yeah, right, go on, man. Bron, Bron not going for AC. Bron ain't trying to play the Warriors. I ain't gonna lie, Bron got to take that L. He, he get Honestly, that Honestly, that's how you the truth, bro. It's the best thing for <laughs> look, Bron to do to play it, the say, Warriors in the right. first round. I know this may it's sound. I agree. I agree. Let's, let's say, go over the first round. No, no, bro. Like because you could. Honestly, bro, it's oh, the, I see what you're why, look, look, listen, I see what you're this is the reason why I think the best thing for him to do to play them I, I know what because they have to figure out how to play yeah. with Boogie in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. They, they really have to figure that out. I don't care what no one says. I don't care what no one thinks. I don't care about that. That's a real thing they have to figure out. Yeah. And with them figuring out how to play together, I feel like Bron could get some steals in there. Yeah. It will. I know this. Um, only and and. and Golden State is only going to have that problem against the Lakers because LeBron is the only person in the league that knows how to control tempo against all them boys. Mm. No one else. No other team. No one else. Big fact. fact. I'm not lying. That's a fact. I think I only had the West, only um, the Rockets and the Lakers being able to beat them, but I think um, OKC could beat the Warriors too now. With the yeah, Michigan. I think so too. I've been saying that, but people looked at me like I was stupid. No, nah, they ain't have no they have no third option. I think now with Morris, you know, Adams is always going to be their score too. I think but you got to remember though, that Morris is not the Cole Morris. The Cole Morris is on board. He's not, but he's still a better shooter than Patterson at the end of the day. Like, three-point shooter? Like, all-around shooter. Mm, I, I'll take Patterson over that Morris. Patterson hasn't been woke in, like, two seasons. Pat- <laughs> Facts. Uh, Facts. But what has, poor, ha, what has Morris been doing in two years? I feel you, but I feel like playing with Westbrook is going is to spark him. I don't know, bro. I, 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 I'm, going, I'm going with Patterson. That's the best. brother's got a dog bro. I think he's going to wake up. But, but don't get me wrong. Patterson definitely fits OKC. He definitely makes them do things that they couldn't do before. So, 
it's a, definitely a great pickup. But if I'm talking about straight shooting, you want shooting? I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take Patterson over over Morris. That Morris is too inconsistent. Now, if you was talking about the Morris on Boston, facts. Yeah, that Morris, Morris is Boston, too. super cool. <laughs> now, I've been telling people that that's the Morris that was on fucking Detroit. That Morris is nice as fuck. Yeah. So. That's basically how we feel. Um, we gave y'all a little special uh, breakdown game by game of basically what we felt, uh, what's going to be the seeding, and, of course, the Lakers playoff push, which is big and crucial. Um, like Rich said, they need 16. I had them at 16. Arwen had 19. And then uh, Rich had 14. So it, we can't wait to see who was closer, who who was over, who was yeah. under, and see if somebody hit it straight on the uh, hey, line. Hey, what, if, what if the Lakers oh, don't make playoffs? It will be crazy. I'm not going. Yeah, it will feel. Right. It will make playoffs, go, nigga. What you talking about? It will feel weird without Bron. That's all I'm saying. You know say. what? I'm riding with it. Lakers ain't making offs. Rich riding with it. <laughs> yo, you know, yo, you know what type of stunts the referees will pull the last game to make Bron make playoffs, nigga. <laughs> listen, listen. All that KD running out of the that, nigga, it's the West. Times three for LeBron, nigga. Times three for LeBron. Facts. So, now, time to move on to a topic that is dear to me and a topic I'm glad that finally got settled. Uh, the whole Colin Kaepernick collusion situation. So, basically, they had come to a settlement. Um, and for most people, a settlement means that the other party basically says, uh, yeah, we just don't want to take it to trial in a sense. And they just agree to terms. It's basically, in a sense, you can look at it as a settlement as a plea bargain. As in the fact that the person's just saying, F it, yeah, we might have did it, we might have not, but we're just going to take whatever it comes with it. The details are confidential, and basically it's only between the two parties, and they both can't speak on what happened. But um, from the collusion situation, his lawyer actually put out that Colin Kaepernick still wants to play. Um, so as far as I feel about this, um, I don't think Colin Kaepernick could play in the NFL again. I would have thought that would have been in his terms and contract, because how I view Kaepernick as now, I view him as kind of bigger than football, in a sense, I don't know if I'm the only one that feels that, I feel like Colin Kaepernick, I know he has a passion for the sport, but I think he would serve a better purpose, kind of like an icon, more like a, in a sense, like a, basically, an activist in a sense. I think it changes his dynasty more though, if he does both though, because like, if it proves that he still can play, while, while standing for what he believes yeah. in, it's like, you know, the ultimate superhero. No, de definitely, without a doubt, but I, I don't know, I just feel like now, him coming back, not just with, like, what, what I don't get, right? Teams didn't want him, like, prior. So now that the situation is resolved and they came to a settlement, now teams are going to say, oh, yeah, I want to take a risk with Kaepernick when he has two years, when he was fresh out of, like, a season before. Well, it's not teams. It's only, like, three of them. Probably, like, the same three that I was looking at him before. Yeah, I know Carolina is definitely one. Carolina is a team that's very pro Kaepernick and the whole Eric Reed situation. They're very supportive of, like, athletes that are, you know, outspoken and stuff like that. So definitely... I know he, I, it's like, a, and I think Cam Newton is getting, so, no, he, Cam Newton is getting shoulder surgery, so I don't know how long his rehab is, so yeah. that would actually be a great pickup, because he fits the same style as Cam Newton, he runs a little less than Cam Newton, Cam Newton is like a more of a, a downhill quarterback runner, but Kyle Kaepernick, that'll actually be a, a great move and transition, I'm just happy this finally got resolved, we all know, we all know it was collusion in the NFL, and we all know what they were aspiring. They were basically blackballing Colin Kaepernick out of the NFL. That is not a, a opinion. That's not. It's a fact. When you have quarterbacks like Nate Peterman, you have fucking Ryan Tannehill's, all these fucking trash quarterbacks in the NFL, and you can't even give yeah, Colin Kaepernick it was a really shot. Ridiculous. Like, come when on. I've seen, my fault for cutting you nah, off. You it good. was really ridiculous when I seen the dude. What dude gets signed to the Bills, man? Nate, super you, you, city you talking about the white quarterback, Nate, Nate Peterman, and he threw five picks. That, he threw five picks in his first start, and then he they started him over Tyrod Taylor, and then he threw five picks. He threw five picks, and then he still and then get a job. Mark Sanchez go to? Mark Sanchez went to the... Uh, why is not coming to me? I forgot Mark Sanchez. I forgot, but he played but, some time. Whatever, I don't care. So you're telling me that Cap ain't better than Sanchez? I don't know. I, I don't know what the NFL is doing. And it's crazy. Like, NFL teams rather, like, 
be like idiots about the whole situation and like actually like do what's best for the franchise. Colin Kaepernick, I don't know, I don't care how much picks he threw his last. First of all, every quarterback has a bad game. Colin Kaepernick had one bad game, and all these Colin Kaepernick trolls on these NFL memes pages will put he's trash. He threw four picks with 69 passing yards. Big Ben did that. I I could bring up facts of Big Ben throwing four picks. His games, Jay Cutler threw three, two pick sixes to, to the same cornerback, D'Angelo Hall. But Jay Cutler got chance after chance after chance. Just like Nate Peterman is getting chance after chance after chance. So don't tell me because Colin Kaepernick, first of all, he didn't even have that bad of a season that year. He he had an underperforming season, but his quarterbacks all had that play worse. And then now you mean to tell me he doesn't deserve an opportunity? This man did had a super, one of the most legendary Super Bowl runs ever. And he doesn't deserve a, a second chance on another team just because of his views on political topics and basically police brutality. So I'm just happy the situation got resolved. The NFL, this is a bad look for the NFL once again. The NFL is always doing something. The NFL is all jacked up right now. But it's basically how I feel about the situation. I'm hoping he gets to play again, but I don't think Colin Kaepernick will ever play in the NFL again. Just, yeah, I think, I yeah, think, I think it's this, done. I think, they, I think with this, they probably gave him a lot of money. And told him like, "Yo, we don't really want you in the NFL no more. So just take this money and go go on." Yeah. So, uh, any I want to caveat off that kind of add what you feel about the collusion well, situation? Well, I, I mean, I don't, I don't really got nothing to say about this collusion stuff because, like I said, I already I already knew they mm-hmm. like from I already knew that they was planning something yeah. against Cap. Like I, it just it just was funny to me. Like yeah, all, so. like. So, so much better QBs was getting yeah. signed. Like, so I mean, so much worse QBs was getting signed. And I'm looking at it like Cap is better than a lot of these dudes. <laughs> a lot of these dudes, yo. Like, I was looking like last year before we drafted Sam Darnold, I was looking at my Jets like, yo, we could use Cap. Fact. We could use his running. We don't got nobody to throw to, but that boy going to run. That's a fact. We could have used that. It's a lot of teams that, that could have used Cap. Vikings could have used Cap before they got... Uh, the Jaguars? Whoa. Oh, the Jaguars could use Cap right, right now. Jaguars could use us, man. <laughs> like, there's so much teams that could use Cap, and to see him not... Listen, this dude went to a Super Bowl. Like, come on. That's a fact. So I, I'm just so glad that they're shown and they're being exposed as they did collude against this man. Oh yeah. Because even though they didn't go to, they didn't you know go to court. Yeah. They, they're basically saying, hey, we did collude against yeah, you. Yeah, just, so take, just this, take this money. Just take this money. <laughs> That's a fact. So I'm, I'm so glad that you know Kaepernick standed up for himself, standed yeah. up for his right and other people's. That's and Kaepernick is a hero in my eyes. He's, he's a true a true hero in my eyes. Like yep. he put everything on the line, bro. Everything. 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 Facts. I definitely agree with that. Th- that man's a hero. Yeah, I look up to guys like that. And I'm so happy. Whatever money he make, I hope I hope he got a billion dollars out of them. them <laughs> I hope so too. So uh, R1, as far as this collusion situation, do you think Kaepernick will play again? How do you feel? What do you think will be the next steps in Cal- Colin Kaepernick's career in the, the collusion situation or whatever? Uh, I'm pretty happy for Kaepernick. All the shows is on how shitty the NFL is. They held on <laughs> Kaepernick all, all year to try to take it to trial, and then they didn't even do that because they didn't think they could win, so they just put it in settlement. <laughs> Facts, so, like, fuck it. Um, I think with all that being done, I do think Kaepernick will be able to play. Cause I think that just shows how much of an impact and how good of his lawyers and how, like how good things are going for him. Mm-hmm. So I think he'll definitely have an opportunity to play since he does want that. And since he already won the settlement, I feel like that would probably be his last thing to achieve. Okay. He's already done so much as far as giving back and things like that. I'm pretty sure he feels like he's completed a lot of what he want to do. And I think like football will be the last thing to check off his list. Yeah. So question. So question before we get into it, before we get off this topic. I mean, not even a question. This is just a fact. So they told, they said that they got, a, they got rid of Kaepernick because quote unquote, he messes up the bottom line. But now you just had to pay this man <laughs> a, a X amount of dollars. That probably mm-hmm. is higher than your bottom line to, to get rid of him. Facts. So, so who, who wins anyway? Who, yeah. who wins? Exactly. Exactly. They basically... Stupid the, asses. Because they had to compensate him for him not playing in the NFL since it was collusion. So, it was a lot of money and that probably includes endorsement deals. That's what I'm and saying. He probably asses. almost brought home almost like 300 
M's because yep. it also goes into the endorsements he could have made while yep. he was playing as well. Yep. They owe that man a lot of money, and I'm pretty a sure lot. it could have been cheaper to keep him. That's a fact. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, most definitely. <laughs> it's it's going to go on performance rather than just, you know what I'm saying, yeah. what we think. Yeah, I'm fact. so happy they're looking stupid right now. So happy. That's a fact. So, uh, this next topic. So, basically, we're going to take a complete 180, and then we're going to do uh, mixtapes. We're going to do our best mixtapes. So, I have a list. This this might take a little while. So, um, yeah, this is a real first. long show, man. Bear with us. So, it's going to be, don't worry, we bless them for a while. We're going to make it. It's fine. So, it's all good, but I'm about to go to the to my little music parts and yep. what mixtapes I bump. <laughs> yep. So, <laughs> me and R want to start while you get that together. So, I have five mixtapes and then we could have like honorable mentions at the like, All so right, people get cool. an idea. I got my five, man. All right. So, give me your five and then your honorable mentions and we'll capitalize off that, whatever the case All may right. be. Everybody knows, number one, without a doubt, you know what I'm saying, rookie of the year, MVP, gonna, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Gunna definitely had what's it called Drip Season Three. Yeah. Yeah, Gunna definitely had the best mixtape last year. The mixtape so, was good. I want before you go any farther. So could we do it like this? All right, could we do it like this? You see how? Cause I once said Drip Season Three, and I was gonna say Drip Season Three. Could I just replace that and put something else? Since he already said it, cause it was so much fire mixtape. I mean, Ooh. I feel like I feel like. We should all go in order. Like mm-hmm. I think we do all think Drip Season was number one, but I don't think we all got the same number two, obviously. Yeah. Oh, y'all going in order. I'm not going to go in order. Oh, I'm not going in order. Oh, I'm just order. saying what I bumped. Oh, I'm going to order my top five. All right, we respect the guy. All right, so I got Gunna, number one, with Drip Season 3. Definitely the best tape. Dropped it early near, and it, it fed him for the whole year. He was able to do collabs, um, drop singles. Really didn't have to drop another project by himself because the project was so good, and it carried him throughout the whole year. Um, the second best tape of the year to me would probably be Dave East Karma 2. He took yeah. another step up. I think Dave East dropped three projects last year. Yeah. One mixtape and two albums, so he's definitely yeah. on the roll. Um, number three for me would be Key Glock Glock Coma. That's a mixtape. Yeah, that's just fire. Probably. Definitely top three. Uh, probably gets the most played because it's just it's so versatile. Workout, drive in. Yeah. You can play it at any time. Um, fourth, I'll have to say Roddy Rich, Feed the Streets. Um, yeah, you got to have that in the list. Found Roddy Rich on accident. I thought Meek Mill was going to drop his album. He was really just promoting Roddy Rich. So I said, I'm going to just bump it. And it was, it was a hit. I didn't even know he was a Meek Mill artist. Yeah, a lot of people don't know still, which is crazy. He's going I deep. didn't even know. I just found out yesterday. I'm not even. Why are Meek always finding find this fire? What's up with Meek, yo? Because yeah, you know, Meek, because Meek, Meek is Meek, plugged bro. into the streets, and a lot yeah. of people in the streets love Meek. They Meek look actually be meeting these dudes before he even mm-hmm. just yeah, finds their music. Yeah, so he'll approach him before he even takes them out of the wing, like low key, like he did Snoop. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. and fifth, I got Lil Dirk signed to the streets three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, that fucking mixtape was tough. Yeah, that's that my mixtape was five. fucking tough. That shit was hard. That's my five. Uh, uh, honorable shit. mentions? You got any honorable mentions all one real quick before? Nah, but we're going to do the honorable mentions last. Let's just I can't even that. think it. I can't even okay. think of no more mixtapes. Yeah, cool. go ahead. Uh, shit. I definitely got to have Future Beast Mode up in that boy. Oh, uh, yeah. Tape. Damn, who else? I got to get Fredo Two-Face Bang up in there. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> tough. I don't think it's, I don't think it's a skip on that on that mixtape for real for real. Uh, Future's artist Doughboy with eighty eight birds. He got some bangers on there. So that's that three. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Shout out to uh. Shout out to MVK. He got some fire on his uh mixtape. Yeah, MVK. I forgot the name. Of, I forgot the name of uh, his mixtape, but he got some heat on there. So I'm go definitely going home team with that one, and okay. Karma Two some fire on there. Od. How much is that? That was five. That was five. That was five. All right then. Honorable mentions. We'll get to other stuff later. Oh yeah, shout out to Don Q. He had a fire take too. Though. Oh yeah, shout out Don. Watching over's like a nigga with this sick silly rabbit with the tricks, keep the carrots in the mix. Hey, keep it real, I don't really like the pics. I'm from 920 